Trying to get the background there. There it is. I'm too short. Whew. All right. Another really good shoulder workout. I was just talking to somebody uh, recently about how your shoulders are like the first when you when you stop working out. Like your shoulders are the first things to like deteriorate, atrophy. Everybody talks about that. It's it's kind of a weird thing, right? How our shoulders are so sensitive to to resistance and, and pushing and pulling and and fighting. So we were designed. Love it. Really good workout. Really good workout. Hope you all have a good fourth. I love y'all. Happy Rebellion Day. Remember, make plans, not excuses. Get to the gym. I love y'all. Have a good day. Bye. How we going? What's up, people? Say hi, Kipper. Kipper, say hi. Say hi, Kipper. Listen, um, I don't even know where the camera, where's the lens on this thing, right there? I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to show you this beautiful sunset, but the purpose of this video is to introduce um, a little trick I'm going to show you. My dad taught me. So if you get an oil filter that you can't get off and you can't get the right size wrench, I recommend you always using the correct tools properly. And don't blame me if things don't go right by my little trick. It's my trick. It's actually my grandfather's trick. Pass it down to my dad. Pass it down to me and I'll pass it down to my kids and I'm passing it on to you because I'm just that kind of a guy. Oh, that's right. I forgot to do my introduction, right? Big DIY guy here. Big DIY guy here. Checking the mail with the dog. So this is how to... Um, check out the cattle over there. See him over there? So I get those crazy horse flies attacking me. Hey, it's pretty, uh huh, buddy? Nice, uh huh? It's gorgeous out. Um, about to get back in the shop. We got how many days left? Basically, a week to get out of here. Uh, trailer's almost, uh, excuse me, the camper's almost done. We're still packing. We got a garage sale tomorrow. <sighs> get out of here. Oh, yeah, so if you're not my normal, get out of here, mosquito. Man, they're crazy up here. They'll drag you away and, like, drink you for days. Draining your blood. So if you're not my normal subscriber, please subscribe. Um, it's su supporting me. I'm almost at, back to my partnership. Remember that whole thing with YouTube when they took partnerships away? For people that didn't have 1,000 members. So I almost got 1,000 subscribers. I'm almost there. Nine-something, I think. So you guys help out this disabled veteran. I see... Uh, Chases his dreams, and if you can look in the, the shop over there, the beauty. Get off me! Get off me, mosquito! Back get up! Get away! Anyways, that's the camper over there. Um, we're hitting the road for our adventure, and uh, help help. I'm gonna find a way to sell my books and help veterans, disabled veterans especially, but mostly veterans. Any veterans? <laughs> yeah, you mosquito. They're like going in your mouth and stuff. Go on, get. Anyways, hope you enjoy this video. Hope it helps you. <laughs> I'm getting off the. I'm getting off. Any mail today? Nothing good. Um. Come on, buddy. Mosquitoes out here. Let me put some bug spray on. I'm getting tired of holding this camera. I need one of those selfie sticks. Woo. Oh, neck cramp. Um. What's I gonna tell you? And help uh, help us change the world, right? That's what it's all about. Leaving the world a better place than when you started. Make sense? I think it makes sense. I love you guys. Be good to each other. I will talk to you soon. Seek, say bye, Kip. Kip. Say bye, guys. Say bye, guys. <laughs> See you guys. All right, so let's just get right back into it. All of the sub wall is done, plywood's up, but I've got all these seams from how I changed my idea from a truck camper to a camper. So I want to go through and put uh, caulking in all the seams and that's where I left off in the last video. So let's get that done and I kind of goop it on there and I just smooth it out with the, uh, with the putty knife.
And that's a bucket of warm water. It's a trick that my father showed me was dealing with uh, water-based silicone. If you keep a warm bucket of water in a rag, if you keep rinsing out the rag, you better get it off your hands and get it off uh, your tools really quickly and easily. And um, you can get rid of uh, big smeary messes off the wood as well. It smooths it right out. But you got to keep your rag clean. Oh, now the wind died. We recovered from our yard sale this weekend, but we still got a lot of stuff to sell. So I think we're going to do another one next weekend. Hope you guys can hear me. I'm holding a box and other stuff. Um, man, I don't understand. It's crazy windy five minutes ago, and it looked like a storm was coming in. It still looks kind of crappy. Supposedly some storms are coming in tonight, but look, clear sky over there. I don't know. Who knows? You never know with Minnesota. Uh, Northern Minnesota. Oh, the music's on in there. Let me uh, talk over here. Yeah, if you remember, this time last year, we recovered from the first tornado. That tree over there down, that's still from this time last year, that tornado we had. So, 
I'm not feeling it too good out here right now. So, yeah. And you got PTSD, stuff like that just triggers fight or flight instantly. It's not a good feeling. But we're calm now. Weather's calm. All right, I'm heading into the shop. I got the water pump. And there's the water tanks right there. Um, as you can see, I got caulking up on the... I put caulking on all the seams. I think I missed a couple seams, but I'll get those when I when I work on the... Up on the roof. I got to cut the edge of the roof to make it line up. And what else I got to do? Yeah, you notice... For some reason, I got two different types of caulking, one clear and one white. I, I know I had one tube of, of clear or something like that. As long as it works, I don't care. I figured the caulking would be better than uh, anything else because it'll give as the trailer goes down the road. So, it'll be flexible, you know? But it's not, it's not to make it waterproof, it's just to help a little bit of, with the water resistance. Hope you guys can hear me over the fans. I got that turbine fan going over here. All right, guys, I'm going to get in there and get to work.
it down so you can hear me for a minute. So you guys saw that struggle, okay? Um, this isn't all the way screwed in yet. So, do I have a flashlight in here? Of course I don't. Um, I think you can kind of see it, the flashlight. Turn a little bit toward the light. Okay, so you can see why that was such a struggle. I actually did a smaller hole than they suggested even. If I had done a bigger hole, like they suggested three and three, or inch and, inch and three quarters or inch and seven eighths, there's no way it would have got in there. So I was thinking about it, like it needs to be smaller than, so I did an inch and a half hole. Um, and so my shims are actually stapled into the underside so that I could screw that um, bracket in. Man, that was such a struggle. And then this one too, you can see, light in there. Um, I don't know if you guys can see there now, my hands are shaking. Oh man. Can you guys see that bolt up there? I don't know why my hands are shaking. Uh, um, see that bolt up there? Okay, that took forever to screw that in. I had to have the wife hold the whole thing together, and then I had to put it past the two by twos, and then screw it in by hand. And then you saw me with the uh, the channel locks using them like a beak. And reaching in there like a beacon twisting it. So I'm pretty sure I, I got it. I mean, it won't go any tighter. I don't know what to do to make it go tighter. Um, but it still feels loose to me. The sink still feels a little, still feels a little wobbly. Come on, focus. Come on, focus. There you go. See, just a little wobbly. Not too bad, I guess. Um, and then this piece still needs to be screwed in too. I don't have to. Get the channel locks in that thing too. I'm sure that's gotta be tighter than that. So I'm gonna put the channel clocks on that real quick. But everything's tightened down. I'm ready to actually run the water now and in the and plumb the P trap. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this in the bathroom. Now, I'm so glad I didn't attach it, because imagine what I would go through trying to get that on there. So that's done. It took me an hour. Crazy. And just I've never done. I've seen I've never done vessel sinks before, so it just feels like it needs to be way tighter. It won't go any tighter. I guess I'll find out if it leaks, right? I should probably do a little. I'm gonna do a little test first to see if it leaks before I put it in the before I attach it to the wall. All right, guys, we're getting back at it. It's a little hand test right there to make sure that it's really tight. But I already tightened it with the adjustable wrench, so it wasn't going anywhere. Now I need to test it. I need to pour some water in there to test for leaks, but also to make sure that the sink stopper work. It's one of those ones that you push down and it clicks into place. So I wanted to make sure that, that worked and that it didn't that part didn't leak as well. As you can see, the sink stopper worked. There's no water leaking out of that part, or I'll actually show you the pipe in just a second. There's no water coming out of it at all. I was going to edit this part, but you know, I figured you could just enjoy the moment and take a look at how awesome it looks in there. Looking really sharp, looking really nice in there. Now I'm going to work on the bathroom, more specifically the shower. I got the um, shower basin in the mail, ordered one that was pre-made. And then all I have to do is use FRP board, that plastic, um, commercial grade plastic wall sheeting that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's and you glue it to the wall. And that'll be my shower walls. But I actually don't get the shower done 
<laughs> before we leave. There's just not enough time. But at least I'm going to go ahead and work on the basin, get that all secure, ready for travel.
All right, so 71 degrees in here. I'm gonna have to talk loudly. Microphone is in the house. Sorry, I don't want to run and go get it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna fix that, but I ran out of uh, spray glue. Just three pieces. I told you it was gonna happen. Remember last winter, this past winter, I told you that that was a possibility. That's fine. Just gonna spray glue it. Actually, I'm gonna just gonna take those pieces out and replace them with new ones. I have plenty left over, so right now I'm gonna start running electrical. But before I do that, let me show you what I did today. It took me a huge project, and this camera won't fit in here, so I'll have to remember to show you the GoPro footage. So what we're doing right now is drilling a hole there in the back for the plumbing, just the plumbing. I'm not gonna run the electrical through there. Um, I ran into a part that I can't drill through, so I don't know what's up with that. Actually, I think it's the, you'll see the drill I was using, the drill bit I was using was, um, what you call it, a wood bit, but it had an extender on it, and the extender kept uh, not holding it in place, and it would just, the drill bit wouldn't turn. The base would turn, but not the drill bit. So, this took me a little while to figure this out in here to get the exact measurements to fit in there perfectly. I'm going to put a little trim down there to fi finish that up. Um, but now, see I put this piece in and I use the thicker plywood that I'm supposed to use for the exterior. And I put a piece over here as well. So that's all done. Look how nice and tight that is. Really happy with the way that turned out. And from what I can see down below, that hole, it's a little off center now because I actually put another piece in here. So what you'll see in the video is like this, these, these piece was too big, too small. Uh, anyways, I had to extend the wall out a little bit, so I put another piece here, put this piece on here with a thicker piece, and then this piece was already here, this piece was already here. And uh, this is nice and secure now. Really strong. I'm really happy with this thing. I can't believe I found that on Amazon. Actually, I think I found a YouTube channel showed me that they used it. Ouch! Man, it's a small space in here. They had used it, so I just looked it up on Amazon and found it. It's gonna be a little bit tricky here because I got metal under the um, under the trailer that actually is like. A, it's like a case. You'll see when I show you later. And I can actually put the, the P-trap underneath it, actually inside the metal case, and then run my plumbing out the side over there. What that means is that I have to run the plumbing from underneath the camper, actually. What's that thing called over there? What we're we gonna call it? The channel? The wheel well channel? Where those two small doors are? Um, that's gonna. What am I trying to say? Um, the plumbing will come through there, and through that hole I made down there, and then it's gonna have to make another. And I'm gonna have to make another hole here, and the plumbing's gonna have to come out. Let me use this to point. The plumbing's gonna have to come out here and up. Okay, for the sink it's going to run that way behind the toilet, but for the shower it's going to have to run up. And so I think I'm going to use copper just because it'll look sharper than the plastic. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. And then run it over across, or actually here, right? Run it here because I can mount it to that 2x2 two two inside there where the lines are. And have my faucet, uh, what you call it? Um, what's it called? The faucet? I guess it's the faucet where you turn it on, and then have the the part that goes up for the sprayer. What I'm trying to tell you is that the sprayer is going to be on that side when normally it's on the side with a drain. Because I don't want to I don't want to run a pipe up and across the ceiling to come over to the to come over to this side. You know that'd be ridiculous. But. Um, so I couldn't put the drain over there because of the metal under the trailer. All that to say. And as well, my plumbing has to come out from that corner. 
So, too much going on over there. All right, well, now, switching modes from plumbing to electric, I'm gonna drill a hole inside this cabinet, inside this cabinet, down into the um, garage. And that's where I'll run all my wires out of. Oh, I see another loose piece up there too. Yeah, well, learn from you guys. You spray glue over the whole thing. Or, like another subscriber suggested, I should have painted all the walls before I did anything. And that would help with the moisture as well. But you live and learn. The next one I build will be right on right on the money. This one was a learning experience. So let me set the tripod up here. Drill the hole. And set up the plumbing. The plumbing. Yeah, you're gonna use plumbing with electrical. Set up the electrical. Seventy-two degrees now. Plus this light is really hot. So I'm drilling a hole um, right through the uh, floor, would it be the ceiling of the garage up there in that piece of furniture, and I'm feeding the 110 wires uh, through the hole, through the ceiling in the garage, and I'm going to mount all my um, boxes for the 110 outlets, and that's where the TV's going, so I bought a special uh, swivel mount that I'm tying right into the stud so it's nice and secure.
you guys can see that I'm working on the electrical on the camper. I think at this point, I thought that I was going to get all the electrical done, not knowing, uh, first of all, how complicated it was and how long it was going to take me to do it. Um, this is that time period when the property was sold and all of a sudden we're sprung with a quick closing date. They opted for a quick closing. So that meant we had two weeks to get out of there. And we actually ran over ran over time for that. But so there wasn't time to do things like the electrical. I just needed to get the outside buttoned up real quick so that it could be uh, transportable. And I'd have to do the electrical somewhere else. So this part I just wanted to lay out all of the electrical stuff first to see what I had to do and I wanted to show you as well how much was going to be involved in doing the electrical. Everything from running the um, DC side of it for the outlets and for um, the fantastic fan and the regular fans and the lights and things like that. And that's, you saw me working in the camper on the 110 side of it, running those wires. You know, what did that look like? How is, how much stuff's involved in that? You got your outlet boxes, you have, you know, you, you have your different types of uh, wiring. Um, was it 14 gauge we used, and then we used 12 gauge, and then we also used 10 gauge for like the 30 amp service. I believe that's how it worked. Uh, anyways, I wanted to lay all this out for you guys to show you guys what was involved in it. Um, and this wasn't even everything that I used. I ended up using a lot more stuff. I'm in the future right now talking about what this what this guy's doing right here in the past. And I can show you, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll show you a picture of, of what the finished um, uh, garage looks like when the electrical is done. I can show it to you now. As you can see, I have a lot involved in that garage. Everything from two 12 volt deep cycle AGM batteries, 3000 watt inverter, solar power, um, and a power box. It's called the power box, uh, the workforce, I believe. And it's the um, best idea I had because it converts shore power into DC power. And that's what I'm working on right there. I'm looking at it. I've never seen one before. I've never held one before. It's all new to me. The side I did know was the 110 side with the breakers in it. I did understand that part from some of the training I've had before. But this box is amazing. It has, um, I'm looking at the box right now to, to tell, <laughs> to learn more about this amazing thing. It has uh, breakers for the 110 side and it has a fuse panel for the DC side as well. With those batteries connected to the converter box, I now have um, power running to my lights all the time. I walk out to the camper right now and turn on the lights. I can go into the garage part of the camper and turn on the lights. I can plug in um, something into the USB outlets and charge something. So I love that. I love that ability. I love being able to have power all the time that I want it in the camper and I think you will too. And I charge those batteries by um, solar. When I'm not plugged into shore power, uh, those batteries are being charged by my solar panels. I'll get into all that later, um, much later on episodes, but I just wanted to give you an idea of where I was and what I was doing with the electrical now. Um, thinking in my head was make something really grand and really big and really complicated. And I knew a little bit about electricity and so my words to you today are to encourage you to do your research, watch videos, and learn how to do the power, okay? Um, and if you can't do it and you're going to get hurt, please hire somebody to do it. It's not worth getting electrocuted over or starting a fire. As you know, we almost had a fire uh, in the camper later on because I did something wrong. But um, yeah, just uh, stay with it, guys. Don't quit. I'm really glad I didn't give up on this project. Looking back now, a couple years later, I'm really happy that I finished this project. And you will be too.